Hello, Incredible One. Welcome to the Incredible Factor Business Podcast, the place to be to grow a business that shakes the planet. I'm your host, business growth coach, Darnell J. Harmon. Join me each week for inspiring stories, powerful interviews, and business growth strategy to help you experience abundance in your life because of your business. Oh, and one more thing. On this podcast, I'm going to keep it all the way real with you about the good, the bad, and the incredible of entrepreneurship. But don't worry, it's all for your good so that you can build a business that funds the life you crave. Let's jump into today's episode. Hello, 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 incredible one. Darnielle here. So excited to welcome you to another episode. This episode is powered by the Breakthrough and Business Experience, which is happening this May, the 21st through the 24th in Wilmington, Delaware. So here's the thing. If you are sick and tired of sitting in struggle and you are ready to bridge the gap so that you can strut in significance, then you need to join us at the Breakthrough in Business event. Simply go to BreakthroughInBusinessEvent.com to learn more. When I was a little girl, I used to love playing with my friends. I mean, Anything that we could come up with in the neighborhood, I really loved playing with it. And one of my favorite games that we would play was called Mother May I. Do you remember playing that game too? It's almost like Simon Says in reverse, right? Someone gets to be the mother and the mother tells you what to do, but the catch is you had to get permission to complete the task. Now that one lucky little girl who got to play mom, and you know, I was trying to make it me every single time, would literally have to grant you permission. Yep, you guessed it. This episode is all about giving yourself permission, permission for whatever, and we'll get into all of that. When we were kids, we used to have to ask for permission for everything. We had to ask our parents for permission to ride our bikes outside. We had to ask for permission to watch television or permission to have a snack, or we had to raise our hands in class and ask for permission to make a comment or ask a question. We even had to ask for permission to go to the bathroom, right? But now we're adults, we're running our own businesses, we're entrepreneurs and CEOs of small businesses, and we continue to think that we need someone else's permission, that we have to ask someone if we should. Well, guess what? (laughs) I am here to liberate you. You do not need anyone else's permission. The only permission you need is permission from yourself. So I'm gonna encourage you in this episode to stop withholding permission from yourself. Stop allowing yourself to be a captive or a slave from the things that you really want to experience. Instead, I want to invite you to give yourself permission freely to step into whatever it is that you are wanting. The Bible says, when I became a man, but of course I'm going to put my darn yell on it, When I became a woman, I put away childish things. And in my opinion, seeking permission outside of yourself is one of those childish things. And you may or may not agree with me, but the fact of the matter is I've been working in and around entrepreneurship for the last 15 years, if you count my time in Mary Kay. But in the confines of my current business, I've watched entrepreneur after entrepreneur after entrepreneur struggle to give themselves permission, to be looking outside of themselves for the answer. Whether that permission was to rise up into the highest and best version of themselves or permission to acknowledge your gifts and talents in the marketplace. Like I literally was doing an interview today on a radio show and one of the caller's question was, how can I show up confidently in my business when the people that I'm talking to are suggesting that my confidence is really arrogance in in disguise. Like he wanted to get permission to be his confident, courageous self. 
right? You might be seeking permission to raise your rates and charge what you deserve for the services that you render to the world or permission to leave that job that you hate or that man who doesn't honor you and celebrate your uniqueness as a woman, right? Or permission to unleash your incredible factor and shake the planet. So here's the thing, no matter what it is you are seeking permission to do, there is no magic mother that you have to ask. You only have to ask yourself. Now, I know if you are a woman and you're listening to this, you're probably but like, but darn y'all, like really? I mean, <laughs> here's the thing. Because I work primarily with women, I know that as women, there is often this internal struggle that you need validation and permission, whether that permission comes from your parents initially, and then your husband or your boss and your coworkers, instead of finding the answers inside of yourself. And because I work with women, I'm really big on experiential activities, right? And one of the activities that I often do with my clients at our business building retreats is the pink slip and permission slip activity. And here's the thing, nine times out of 10, in order for you to give yourself permission, you're going to have to let go of something. So pink slips and permission slips typically work in tandem and go hand in hand. In my own life and business, there have been countless times that I've had to give myself permission to shift my own thought processes, to raise my own deserve level, to think differently than I had been doing. So here's an example. There was a time in my life, I mean, for, for a good portion of my life, if I had to put a percentage on it, I would probably say for 35% of my life, I believed I could not have it all. And when I talk about having it all, I'm talking about having success and money and someone to share it with, right? Family support. Now, one of the stories I haven't told you about myself is that I don't really come from a close-knit family. I grew up in a household with four other people who had my same exact last name, but we were the furthest thing from a family. And I'm always very celebratory of people who do come from great families that call their sister sissy, or when they get great news, they can't wait to gather the family together, or they vacation together, and they do all of those grand and wonderful things together. But yeah, you know, that's not my life. That's not where I come from. And so the thought of it all encompassing family and love and unconditional love and support was something that I only saw on TV. I mean, the Cosby show, if I can just keep it real with you, right? It wasn't my reality. And so I really struggled to think that I could have it all. There was a distinct period of time when I thought I had to either choose. I had to choose success or love. And all of the examples around me were people who had one or the other. No one had it all. No one had them both. Either they were drunk in love and broke or they were flossing and lonely. There was no common ground where they had both things. Now, I also know that the reason that was my reality and that's what was going on around me was because of a little thing called the law of attraction, right? Your thoughts become the things that manifest themselves in your life. And I did not see examples of people having it all because I did not think having it all was possible. And so as I tell you the story and, and reflect back on who I used to be before I learned how to give myself permission, I'm wondering, what are the stories you've been telling yourself? Because it is the stories that you've been telling yourself that are holding you back from getting whatever it all means to you. You're going to have to rise up courageously to give yourself the permission that nine times out of 10, you need to give yourself. Well, at least for me, let me just make this all about me instead of making this about you. For me, it really took courage. I had to be courageous enough to dispel my own myths that you just can't have it all, right? And usually trying to get out of your own way on your own is extremely hard. Often the only thing standing between you and your next level is your ability to recognize an opportunity to give yourself a permission slip. And while you may feel compelled to, Scream, mother, may I? 
you need to know that you hold the power of getting what you want. And it really only takes a decision. I love, love, love the Emerson quote. And if I could tell it to you every single time we're together on an episode, I would. And it says, once you decide, all of the universe rearranges itself to give you what you decided. So it really is that simple, but you and I both know that it is not that simple. Most people don't realize that the culture of asking for permission creates a question of your self-worth. If you are feeling like you need someone else's permission, you don't think in and of your own power and strength you deserve it. So it usually messes with your self-esteem, your self-confidence, and your self-worth because it's attached to the ability to receive permission for the things that you want. So it, it is really important for you to understand that it is not uncommon to take the ch childlike version of yourself, right? Your inner seven-year-old that had to ask for permission and to still be carrying that pattern into adulthood. And I know you're probably wondering, okay, Darnielle, this, this is all great, but what does this have to do with my business, my incredible factor business? Well, stick with me because here's what I know. You cannot have a booming business when you have a busted life. And the patterns that I'm talking about will show up everywhere. It will show up in your business as well as in your marriage or relationship and, and even your other relationships outside of your romantic one. For example, let's say you go to the mall, you just happen to be out at the mall, or maybe you had a meeting at the mall for lunch. And after lunch was over, you thought, oh, I'll just run into Macy's or Dillard's or whatever department store is equivalent to Macy's where you live. And you see these shoes that you would love to have, but you don't buy yourself the shoes because you look at the price tag and you're afraid that your husband will disapprove or you guys have made a decision that you're on a budget or you're saving for something special and the thought of you walking in with a brand new pair of shoes will create disruption and not positive disruption in your marriage. And so you decide not to indulge yourself because you don't have quote unquote permission to make the purchase. Or maybe you're so busy doing something for someone else that you don't give yourself permission for self-care. That doesn't even sound right, does it? And neither scenario does it sound right. Like I remember even before I was married and, and dating and talking with my married friends and they would talk about how they would make purchase and they were, purchases and they would hide them. They would figure out how to get them in their closet and they would immediately remove the tag so that they could blend the clothes in like it was part of something that was already in their closet. Listen, <laughs> Darnielle, Darnielle's not doing that. Darnielle gives herself permission to live her best life and to indulge in everything she thinks she deserves. And that's something that's been always really important for me to talk about in friendships as well as with my husband and my marriage because I want to be very, very clear that I deserve everything that I want everything that I'm craving, I deserve it. There is, there is nothing separate, separating me from what it is that I have or desire to have, except for the amount of time it takes for me to, to possess it. But I truly realize that the only one who I need permission from is myself. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that there is a level of courtesy and respect that goes along with being in a relationship. We're not talking about being disrespectful at the um, it's at the expense of you getting what you want and giving yourself permission. I'm not suggesting that at all, but what we're talking about nine times out of 10 isn't that. What we're talking about is you being afraid or you allowing fear to keep you from giving yourself permission to do whatever it is that you want, right? But there's something I really need you to remember, and that is that you are here on this planet on purpose, with a purpose, for a purpose. And it is absolutely impossible for you to ever rise up and be who you were called to be if you're always looking for someone else to give you permission. The only way you can even ever begin to fulfill your purpose and be who God called you to be is to give yourself permission to live for the things that you love. And giving yourself permission when you need to give yourself permission for whatever it might be, that fabulous pair of shoes, that new investment, whatever it might be, 
will give you the boost that you need in your confidence and in your courage, and it will give you empowerment, right? Now, it also means that if you are giving yourself permission, there are some things, again, that you're going to have to let go of in order to access the things that you really, really want. Because again, nine times out of 10, what is keeping us from giving ourselves permission is something that is no longer serving us. So in order for that to happen, it is going to require for you to get into alignment and be so in tune with who you are that you know when you need to shift. Shift by giving yourself permission or shift by getting rid of something that's no longer serving you. So what I'd like to do for our remaining time together during this episode is talk to you about ways to give yourself permission, if that's okay. I strongly believe that when you start to see yourself the way that God sees you, everything will change, especially your business, right? Part of the reason why I spend as much time as I do talking about the mindset stuff is because nine times out of 10, to move your business forward and it, so that it experience massive growth, it isn't going to take marketing or sales strategy. It is going to take giving yourself permission to rise up and step into the highest and best version of yourself and be the thought leader or the service provider that your clients need so that their problems get solved right the first time. And it's gonna require more of you to do that. So here are some of my favorite ways to give yourself permission or things you need to do. So let's talk about things you need to do first to give yourself permission. And then I'll give you some of my favorite permission slips. So you have to learn to trust yourself, trust your own voice, trust your gut, right? Follow your intuition. The beautiful thing about being a spiritual being, having a human experience is that you've been given a guidepost. You have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you and your Holy Spirit is giving you clues all day long, every day of the week and probably twice on Sunday to trust yourself to trust your own judgment, to trust your own beliefs and your own morals and your own thought patterns and the way of doing things. So you've got to learn to trust yourself more. Then you've got to see yourself the way God sees you. I can't stress this one enough. And the way you do that is through prayer or meditation or your own spiritual practice. And that spiritual practice needs to give you both power and permission, pun intended. Then you're going to need to let go of the need for approval. One of my favorite books, I highly, I, I highly recommend this book. I'm not even sure if this book is still in publication, but if it is, you need it. I remember when I got it off of Amazon, it was like a dollar and five cents or something crazy like that. But Terry Cole Whitaker's What You Think of Me is None of My Business. Terry Cole Whitaker, What You Think of Me is None of My Business. If you want deliverance, oh my gosh, you need, the, you need that book. It will give you permission to let go of the need to get approval from other people. It will allow you to look inward to find the answers that you've been seeking. Because here's what I know, all that you need, you already have. It's in you already, right? The Bible says it, before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you and he approved of you and he called you prophet. I mean, he's already equipped you with everything that you need to shake the planet. You just need to give yourself permission to unearth it by letting go of the need to get approval from other people. It's gonna require you to love yourself more. You gotta love on you. You've gotta cherish and, and spoil you, if spoil is the word that you'd like to use. You gotta do that more. And here's the thing, those of you who wanna give yourself permission to find love, you won't find it until you love yourself. Otherwise, you'll be a broken person trying to find another broken person to try to become a whole person where in fact you need to be one whole person who finds another whole person coming together in order to build a life together, right? You also are gonna need to remove the obligations that you've placed on yourself. One of the biggest fears, in my opinion, it's the biggest fear, it's bigger than the fear of success or failure is the fear of responsibility. And responsibility comes with obligations and obligations mean we need permission, right? So you have got to remove the obligations from yourself and decide that 
the only one you need to please is you and the God in you. So the two, the two, right? So you and the God in you is where the pleasing stops. Because here's what I know. If you're pleasing yourself and you're pleasing God, everyone else around you would give you permission. Although you don't need their permission. You only need your own permission. And then you need to make giving yourself permission a daily practice. Every day of the week, you need to give yourself permission. And, you know, two times a day if need be. You just have to get in the habit of it. Start small. Start where you are. And then grow and gravitate and take on something bigger. Right? But know that you deserve it and know that you're worth it. That's really what it all boils down to. And once you start recognizing that you deserve it in your own life, it'll show up in your business. Because again, you cannot have a booming business if you have a busted life. But a booming business is waiting for you when you start giving yourself permission to be all that you were created to be. I think that when God created you, he was showing the world what incredible looked like. He did not have time to make a nobody, only time to make a somebody. I remember when I worked for uh, MBNA America, we used to have Lewis Timberlake come in. He was one of the motivational speakers that were kind of like on payroll. And I remember every single time I went to one of his classes, he would always say, God did not have time to make a nobody, only a somebody. And so I'm sharing that with you today. God only had time to make a somebody. And that somebody was given dominion over the earth, right? You know the story of creation. You don't need me to tell it to you. But let me remind you that you've already been given dominion. You just need to take it back. And you take it back by giving yourself permission. Now, I just want to share with you in our remaining time some of my favorite permission slips that I want you to begin giving yourself as often as you need to. These are in no particular order, but they are all uber important. Number one, give yourself permission to find moments of gratitude every single day. You know what? While we're at it, give yourself permission to feel joy, whether that's through singing or dancing or playing music or, you know, getting it on with your spouse. Whatever it is, find joy every single day. I give you permission. Give yourself permission to do that. Give yourself permission to laugh. Stop taking yourself so seriously. Laugh more. Laugh more. Oh, the Bible says laughter does the body good as though it were medicine. Laugh more. Give yourself permission to take the pressure off. Okay, you didn't hit your goal. It's not the end of the world, right? You can always start over again tomorrow. I remember in the early years of building my business, there were days when I straight up fired myself because I just, I couldn't do it. I I wasn't feeling it. But guess what? I could wake up the next morning and I could rehire myself. Give yourself permission. Give yourself grace, right? Give yourself permission to burn the box, to just eliminate all of the fears and self-sabotage and limiting beliefs that have held you captive, that have kept you boxed in from a life and business that serves you in every possible way. Give yourself permission to rest when you need to. If you're tired, sleep, lay down. Stop feeling like the daily mundane tasks are going to make the planet erupt into a black hole if you don't do them. The world will not end if you leave dishes in the sink overnight, okay? The world will not end if you don't send that last email until the next day. The world will not end. Give yourself permission to rest when you need to rest. Give yourself permission to let go of toxic relationships. Toxic people drain you. Remember, energy is neither lost nor destroyed. It is merely transferred from one party to another. So let go of anything that has the ability to drain you. Give yourself permission to love your body. Stop comparing yourself to others, right? Those images in the media that appear perfect but are really airbrushed. (laughs) Give yourself permission to let all of that stuff go. Dress in clothes that make you feel good. Style your hair the way you want it. Give yourself permission to love yourself. Give yourself permission to trust your inner light. Man, I can't stress this one enough. Step out of your comfort zone by trusting your inner light. Give yourself permission to simplify your life however you want. Like I remember just 24, 36 months ago, 
I had more money and I had more problems and I didn't want that. I gave myself permission to simplify my life and my business. Give yourself permission to forgive yourself. Now, I will be honest, forgiveness is a practice. It's a process. It's going to take time, but you want to do it every single day. Forgive yourself and forgive others so that nothing stands between you and the things that you want. Give yourself permission to say yes to what you want to say yes to. Telling yourself yes is empowering. Say yes to whatever it is you want in your life, but also say no. Give yourself permission to say no. No is a complete sentence. It does not require that you back it up with substantiation. All by itself, it is enough. Give yourself permission to be the best and highest version of yourself, whatever that means. You don't need to gain a pound, lose a pound, get taller, get shorter. You don't, nothing in you needs to change. You are perfect in this moment, the way you were created to be. Rest in the perfection that God created and give yourself permission to live your best life in, in spite of that. Now let me give you some ways to give yourself permission in business. So I want you to give yourself permission to reduce your offers if you want. You don't need to have a wide business model. You don't need to be all things to all people. You can be very, very streamlined. Give yourself permission to build what I call a deep business model. Give yourself permission to raise your rates. You know you should be charging more. And you know it because every time you work with a client at your low rates, you feel some form of resentment or anger or guilt or frustration instead of being happy and elated that you get to serve them every single day, that you can't believe that they are paying you as well as they are paying you for you to get what it is that you're getting from them. Give yourself permission to raise your rates. Give yourself permission to change your ideal client. If the clients you have been serving don't give you life, stop serving them. Give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to start that business full time. If the job that you have, you can't stand it. You're not doing anyone any favors by going to a job you hate every single day because you're not engaged, which means you're probably making mistake after mistake and you're probably on the verge of a plan for corrective action. Give yourself permission to stop hustling and grinding. You don't want to be working from dark 30 to dark 30 anyway, but you do it because you think you, it's what you have to do. But you can change all of that by giving yourself permission to challenge the status quo. Give yourself permission to be happy. Whatever makes you happy. And guess what? What makes you happy doesn't have to make anyone else happy. It only has to make you happy. So whenever I think about that game that I played as a child, Mother May I, and the permission that I had to be granted to take a step or do a cartwheel or recite a poem, I can think back on those times and I can smile because I really did enjoy that game. But now that I'm an adult, now that I'm running a business that shakes the planet, now that I'm living my best life in every possible way, I'm the one who gives myself permission. There is no more mother may I. And my extreme hope for you is that you will one day be able to say the same thing. So do yourself a favor. Or if you won't do it for you, do it for me. I want you to write down at least 10 things that you're going to start giving yourself permission to do. In your life, in your relationships, and in your business. Because you deserve it. You deserve more than you settle for because you're waiting for approval or permission. And my prayer, my hope, my desire for you is that you will once and for all stop saying, mother, may I, and decide instead to say, yes, I can. Until next time, take care. Thank you for joining me for the Incredible Factor Business Podcast. I'd love to help you grow a business that shakes the planet. Get started today by joining our exclusive community at sixfigurecashflowclub.com. And if you enjoyed our time together, do yourself a favor, head on over to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Until next time, you deserve a business that funds the life you crave. Take care.